welcome to the handover ceremony of the much needed motorcycles for the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. I would like to call on Honorable Virginia Albert Poyot to deliver remarks on behalf of the Ministry of Home Affairs. Today is another very significant day for law enforcement and security in St. Lucia as it relates to what is happening at Home Affairs. And in that department, which is responsible for the administration of the police, we have tried our best with the full support of the Honorable Prime Minister to ensure that our law enforcement officers have the tools that they need to carry out their duties. From day one, the Prime Minister has made a commitment to support our law enforcement officers. And this is another way of li living up to his commitment and the expectation. I have heard feedback from the law enforcement officers and those who speak from the heart will tell you that they are very pleased with the support that they are getting from the government. I have indicated the efforts that we have put on the ground in terms of visiting mostly all the police stations, looking at the different equipment, the conditions on which they work. And so far, they have seen some movement in that area. It is on this very same site, a few, about a year ago, the Prime Minister gave a number of vehicles to the police. We have given bicycles, we have given motorcycles, and we are in the process of repairing and building new police stations and subdivisional headquarters so that we are quite excited about it and we want the police officers to celebrate this activity today where the police officers will be receiving additional tools in the form of motorcycles so that they can keep peace law and order in this country so we will continue to work with you we will continue to support you and i can guarantee you that the Prime Minister is with you 100%. The Cabinet of Ministers give him his full support so that we can give you the tools that you need to carry out your work. All we are asking of you is to give your best to keep St. Lucia in safe hands, to make St. Lucia safe for all its citizens. So once again, let us proceed as we move in giving you the tools to carry out your duties. I thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Honorable Minister. I would now like to call on Acting Commissioner of Police, Mr. Ronald Philip, to deliver remarks. It is, in, it is an honor and privilege to join you on this occasion of the handing over of motorcycles to the Royal St. Police Force by the Government of St. Lucia. On behalf of the rank and file, I wish to thank the Government of St. Lucia for hearing the cries of the police and assisting in obtaining much needed motorcycles to complement the current fleet. In the past, the Royal St. Lucia Police Force would have had to engage our counterparts in the sub-region when the need for additional motorcycles were required to operate for major regional and international events. We had to loan motorcycles from different countries, Antigua and RSS member states would have to um, ship, ship motorcycles here for us. And during our budget presentation, we made a, an appeal to the Prime Minister because this situation was unacceptable and it is something we just couldn't, it was not sustainable. These motorcycles will undoubtedly, undoubtedly play a pivotal role in strengthening the operational efficiency and tactical ability of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. The donation could not have been more timely. The organization has realized the importance of tra traffic management as a key component of our citizen security strategy. To this end, the organization has prioritized road safety as a cri critical part of its policing mandate. To date, the island has recorded a total of 1,026 traffic accidents, with 10 of them being fatal. This is of serious concern, and, addi and the addition of these five motorcycles, we have not gotten the, the rest, but the addition of these five motorcycles will bolster our ability to patrol the byways and byways of St. Lucia. 
that motorcycles will undoubtedly assist traffic officers in performing their duties, especially in investigations of traffic collision and other traffic-related matters. The RSLPF remains steadfast in ensuring that citizens' security and safety remain our top priority. So on behalf of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, I would like to thank you, Mr. Prime Minister, and your cabinet for acceding to our request and ensuring that our mobility is improved in quick time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Acting Commissioner. Um, I'd now like to call on Honorable Philip J. Pierre, Prime Minister and Minister for National Security. Prime Minister. When I <coughs> took over the, the mantle of Minister for National Security, I promised the police one thing, that my job would have been to make the environment that they work in better for them by causing them to get the necessary equipment, necessary vehicles, the necessary, all what they needed to make their job easier. When I was walking across, the Minister of Home Affairs said to me, she doesn't want me to say that my father was a policeman. <laughs> but I constantly say that because I know I was brought up under the, 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 the tutelage and the discipline of a policeman father. So I always have that empathy towards the police because I know what my dad went through. And I can tell you, if you think things are bad now, you can imagine how they were a few years ago. Like having to walk, having to walk, leave home and walk down to work. I remember there was a guy who used to carry a little, a little blue box with that my mother put his, my dad's food for him and brought it down to him in the station for his lunch and his breakfast. That was the life of, 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 of a cop. Working all these long hours, there was no distinction between the fire brigade and the police service. They were all one. That was what I was brought up in. So I decided that when I would have the opportunity, I would have made life better for the police. And that is still, that is still my, my objective. So, so we started by making them more mobile. And you know, sometimes we behave as if life in St. Lucia began in July 2021. Life began a long time before that. Life did not be begin in July 2021. The conditions that the police service worked under did not be begin in 2021. They began a long time before that. But our job is to make them better. Not to blame anybody, but to make them better. And we have and we continue to make them better incrementally. And I, I, I can assure you, by the time in the next three years, the conditions of work for the police in this country will improve. And when I say improve, I don't mean incrementally improve. It will be a hundred times better than it was in July 2021. <clears throat> and that is, and I want you to measure it, as I always say, to measure it, to measure it. By the time we are finished, you will have the divisional headquarters in Grosile. You will have a redone station in Viewfort. You'll have repairs to many of the substations. You will have many more vehicles. I think we've added 20 something already. I promised 100. I, I, I should reach 100 before the, the term is over. I promised training. You must you will understand that in, in, in July 21, the, the, the training vote was zero. We've increased that training vote. So I can assure you that more policemen are going to be going, on, going to train and speaking about motorcycles, I have a vote of $400,000 for police equipment. I think we should, we should be able to get <clears throat> probably five more motorcycles. So I can assure you, that's all I can do. All I can do is to create the environment. I can do nothing else. I can't stop rumors. I can't stop Roro. All I can do is create the environment for you to work. That's all, that's my job. 
My job is to use the scarce resources of the government to make life better for the police, to give them better conditions of work, to give them more equipment, to make them use modern techniques of crime, of crime prevention. That's all I can do. I know your job is very tough. But as I always said, it's an honor to have the power of the uniforms that the police wear. It's a great honor because you, police, have the authority and the power to withhold people's freedom. That is a serious power, a serious power that must be taken seriously. So as I said, I appreciate everything that the police do for the country of St. Lucia. Of course, it, 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 it could be better. Of course, the conditions could be better. Of course. Wages could be better. Everything could be better. There is nothing in life that's perfect. But I can assure you that incrementally, the government is committed to ensuring that the men and women in the St. Lucia Police Force get better conditions, get better equipment, so that they can do their jobs better. So I want you to remain focused. I want you to remain focused on the job of law enforcement. I want to, to be able to develop relationships with the society, with the community, so the trust in, in the police can be augmented. I need you to understand that the service that you perform is not for me, is not for the government, but it's for the people of St. Lucia. And that's what's important. You work for the people of St. Lucia. When you are good police, the people of St. Lucia get the benefits of your work. So we need to understand that we need, we need you. We need your service. We appreciate your service. And these motorcycles is just the beginning of what we intend to do to cause your conditions to be better. So I wish you well. And I say to you, just remain focused. Just remain focused. Just keep your eye, I won't send the price, but just keep your eye on the work of policing. Just keep your eye there. And if you keep it there, we'll be, we'll be, we'll be, everything will look well. So thanks again for what you do, and I wish you all the best. Thank you.